Hello, welcome to Build. I'm Lee Blickley from HuffPost. And today I'll be joined by director Jessica Hausner and actor Emily Beecham of Little Joe, a psychological drama, drama centered around a scientist who genetically engineers a plant that can alter emotions to make its owner happy. But as the flower grows, the people around it appear to change for the worse. Take a look. Our aim was to create a plant with a scent that makes its owner happy. We are entering a new era here. The first mood-lifting, antidepressant, happy plant. We've received orders from all over the world. I just wanted to say that I feel really proud to be working with you. Look what I have for you. What do you say we call him Little Joe? You have to take good care of it. Keep it warm. Talk to it. It needs attention. What's so special about it? It makes you happy. <laughs> Haven't you noticed how Chris has changed? I think little Joe's pollen has triggered something. Little Joe changes the people he infects. <laughs> You're starting to notice too, aren't you? Fear can distort our perception of reality. If I made a mistake, then it's my fault. It seems that this has all been a bit much for you. He frightens me. You're a good mother, but which of your children will you choose? Good night, little Joe. Let's welcome Emily Beecham and Jessica Hausner. Thank you for being here. Hi. Hi. Is everyone freaked out? Everyone's a little scared, right? A little after Halloween delight? <laughs> Um, so, Jessica, tell me, this is your first uh, English language film. Um, how did you think of this concept, though? It's very, I read that you call it a female Frankenstein story. Um, yes, I was very much interested in creating a film with where the main character, the female main character, she's a scientist, and being a scientist, she, she creates a sort of monster, which is the plant, like in the Frankenstein story. But she's also a mother, and her child is very dear to her, but throughout the story, the relationship between the two of them is sort of altered or changed. And those feelings of guilt of a mother who feels responsible as well for one child, which is her real child, and the other child, which is the plant. So this anxiety or this um, difficulty is in the center of the story. When did this idea strike you? What made you want to kind of explore, uh, you know, genetic mutation and, and all that? It's interesting. Well, I find it a very important topic of our times. And also there is so much misinformation around. And I think, um, I don't know, every one of you knows very well that you can look up any truth in the internet. So if you want to find arguments against genetic engineering, you'll find them. And if you want to find the arguments pro, you will also find them. And we did a quite intense research, so we talked to a lot of scientists. And I have to say that even after that, I cannot decide if I'm pro or con, because there are advantages and there are disadvantages. Yeah. And, and you kind of get that sense, too, from the film, because it ends on a note where um, some people will think one way and others will think another way. Is that yeah, Was absolutely. that your goal? Yes, absolutely. It's, it's a very um, two-sided topic. And also the film is talking exactly about the fact that in the end you have to decide yourself. There is no very clear yes or no. So a lot of spectators go for the yes and others go for the no, which is interesting, yeah. And Emily, tell me how uh, you became a part of this film. Uh, it's a really dynamic role, and I know that you won uh, Best Actress at Cannes, so congratulations. That deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Must have been a nice surprise. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was definitely a surprise. Um, well, I'd worked with the production company before in another film called Daphne, mm -hmm. and uh, the, um, the writer, Geraldine uh, Bajar, uh, had also seen me in that, 
and uh, the writer of Little Joe, and uh, and Bertrand Fevre, the the producer uh, of both movies, contacted me about it and said that they they had this role and <clears throat> that Jessica was directing and I'd seen Lords, which Jessica directed before, which is a brilliant film. And uh, Ben Wisher was attached, and the role sounded complicated and uh, interesting. intense, <laughs> interesting, <laughs> and <laughs> and um, the type of role that I definitely would like to play. And um, yeah, I, it was. I, it, I didn't really have to think about it much. I was really, really interested in doing it. Yeah. And then we met. When we met together, and we discussed the role, Alice, and yeah. It, is that is this kind of a script that when it comes uh, to your attention, it really grabs you because it's it's original. It's an original. Yeah, there's story. not many female. Yeah. Well, not many roles like that around. I mean, I think there there are better roles for women now yeah. coming to head, which is great. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely a very special protagonist role for a for a woman to play. Yeah. What was the most difficult part? about playing Alice for you? Did you have to do a lot of research yourself to kind of get into that mindset of a scientist mm -hmm. in this world? Well, Ben and I, um, Jessica and co, uh, arranged for Ben and I to meet some scientists in a lab, and we extracted DNA from a leaf, which was an experience. <laughs> and they explained virus effectors, genes, uh, all, all this information with us several times. And then Ben and I had to go home and watch more videos because we were still confused. But, um, and uh, yeah, that, that was really fascinating. I felt, w we both felt we really had to understand, well, I felt I really had to understand what I was talking about. Um, so I, I, I focused a lot on that, um, yeah. Jessica, did you feel that same way when you're, you were doing the research for this? You really wanted to be authentic to what, I mean, this is, of course, a fictional story, but something that could possibly maybe happen. I know, did you speak to um, any experts in this field? Yes, absolutely. I, I've thought we have to build a story that could be true, so even though it's maybe not likely and it doesn't happen all the time, but it has to be somehow plausible. So I asked some scientists if they could possibly think of a story where a plant invades a human being in real. And so they thought about bacteria, they thought about fungus, and then they come up with that idea about a plant virus or a virus that is used for genetic engineering. Sometimes parts of viruses are used as a tool to perform this um, gene transfer. And they came up with the idea that such a virus could possibly mutate and become um, dangerous for a human brain. It's slightly crazy, the story, but it's not at all um, unreal. So it could happen. That's terrifying. <laughs> and t um, the art direction on this is stunning, um, especially the plant. Uh, what was the process to design the plant and how you wanted it to look um, and kind of act on screen? Um, I remember I made a first sketch of the plant, um, it, of the flower. It was a red flower, very simple. And then um, the prop maker offered different versions. And I think the idea basically was to create a plant that is so it is a bit on the edge of r reality or not. So it, it should. It was inspired by nature, but it looks a bit off, a bit odd, a bit strange. It is a personality of its own. And we had all those plants built, so they were handmade. And we had, I think, five different stages of growth and thousand plants each. So it was really a massive um, amount of plants that were brought back and forth for all the scenes. And when it comes to the digital part, only when the plant is moving, what we saw in the trailer before, we wanted that movement uh, to look like a puppet, so um, not very smooth, but a little bit awkward also and funny, so that we have the feeling the plant, yeah, it's, it's also a being, it's an existence, it's something alive. Yeah, it's, a char it's definitely a character in this, yeah. in this movie. Um, and Emily, for you, uh, what was it like when you first saw the, the plant that you would be working with in this room full of... Little well, dose. Jessica showed me the plant in our first meeting, actually. I love the whole aesthetic of the movie. So she showed me a lot of the sets and 
uh, we even discussed the hair in our first meeting, mm. the bowl haircut, which <laughs> I said, yes, I will cut my hair in a bowl. <laughs> um, yeah, and I really loved uh, that idea, uh, the, the, the whole larger than life, sort of really vivid, acidy colors and... and and then, and then, of course, Jessica's. I've se seen her other movies, and the, and the acting style is so real and so paired with that and the story. I thought it, it, it sounded like a really interesting combination. Yeah, what was it like working with Jessica? Because uh, I read that you said you know you did many takes, mm -hmm. um, and it was a different kind of experience for mm -hmm. you. So um, tell us a little bit about uh, how you felt working with Jessica, and then Jessica, what your style is as a director. I think every experience is so different, which is why it's why, why I love. It's been so enjoyable working in interesting films as every director works so differently. But uh, yeah, Jessica, um, yeah, there was um, a lot of choreography and, and it, it is obviously very stylized. Uh, so that was a new experience. It's very challenging to, to stay authentic and also um, remember all these notes. Um, uh, yeah, and, uh, but I, I trusted Jessica, so it was it was all good. <laughs> yeah, Jessica, what you're you know every you could tell every um, scene, every shot has a particular look that you were going after. Uh, so, what is it like to work with actors and make sure that you get exactly what you want and then get the best performance out of your talent? Um, it's through rehearsing. We set up the camera and uh, then. I explain to the actors what I have in my in mind, and then we do some rehearsals and we repeat one scene quite often because at some point I think um, you sort of get used to the ballet, the choreography, and then you can start to act <laughs> because then you don't think, oh, I have to step over there <laughs> and where is my mark? So we do quite a lot of repetitions because the scenes are long. Um, but when working with actors, I think what I enjoyed a lot was also that we were talking a lot about um, the undertone of what is said. That um, the whole film is very much based on that idea that you don't always say what you really think. So in all those scenes, we were talking about, okay, what is the pretentious moment of it? And why, do they, why does this character say it now? Not because she this is really the truth, but maybe because she follows another um, second thought. And I have the feeling this is what we all do all the time. We do not mostly say what we really think, but more what is good to say now or what makes us uh, function well within our society. Yeah. So this is what the film is also focusing on. Yeah, there's so many aspects to it. And I know that you mentioned uh, the motherhood aspect, which of course your character Alice has a son named Joe, and you actually bring home one of these plants uh, to him, and things kind of unravel from there. So how was it to balance, you know, again being a mother to not only the plants mm -hmm. but to a son, and and finding that balance in your own role? I think that was a theme that was really cleverly uh, blurred by Jessica because I think the two lines are. Uh, Alice, the character, is having a bit of a struggle with her uh, son. She's more comfortable in her work life, and 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 her son is growing and has mind of his own. And 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 then um, and then also when the plant comes into play, I think the lines start getting blurred. She goes down this rabbit hole of paranoia and trying to work out what is real and what isn't. And uh, I think yeah, the plant is she's is her child, and so is Joe. So it, it's 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 becomes this kind of labyrinth for her of confusion. Yeah. And you never know if, if she's right or if the people around her um, are actually going crazy or if she's going crazy. It's really interesting. Um, and of course, Ben, uh, who's fabulous, plays your partner in this. Yeah. Uh, what was that like to work with him? Um, and I know that he was signed up to be a part of the project. Yes, he was. Before. Yeah, I, I, he's been one of my favorite actors for so many years, so I was like completely thrilled to be able to work with him. And he's absolutely lovely. He's just the jolliest, loveliest, <laughs> laid back guy ever. And, and yeah, he's good fun to work with. Which is nice on a set like this. I'm yes, sure exactly. <laughs> and then he can just go straight into Creepy Chris. Yeah. <laughs> and how did you cast uh, Ben? Did, he, did you have him in mind for this role? Um, what was that? Um, yes, I did. And um, I think I was lucky because he um, did know my previous films and he liked them. And um, 
And for this film, so we met and we were talking about the script for a while. And I had the feeling um, that we, yeah, we understand quite well what it should be like. And I also have the feeling that Ben is someone who, also like Emily, who appreciates to go for an adventure with a film, to try out something new and not to just repeat what you always did. So that was for all of us a sort of adventure and to go to a new territory. Is that exciting for you as an actor, is to kind of dip into independent film a little more, original films? I know that you've been yeah, um, you know, a mainstream television show, and mm. it's very different. <laughs> yeah, it's a very different yeah. discipline and experience. Yeah, I think every director's movie, if they have the freedom, is, 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 is like their personality. It's unique. Every, it's like a fingerprint. Like it's, Every one is different if you've got creative freedom. I think that's just the most amazing thing about it. And you could be really collaborative and it's always a discussion and your input is important. And, and, and it, yeah, I really enjoy it, yeah. working with people like Jessica. It's hard enough being an original writer, director, creator, but to be a woman also in this industry is hard. I know. I, th I think you were one of four women at Cannes to have a film. Um, I mean, is, is, is it, have you seen a change and in your ability to be able to make the projects you want to make and, and have uh, that opportunity to kind of, you know, bring something to light like Little Joe, which is so interesting and original and eerie? And um, I always had the feeling it is possible to make the films that I want to make. Um, part of it was always that I founded my own production company back in 1999. Um, and that helped me to be in power to make the decisions that I want to make. Um, but for example, concerning Cannes, that they had four female directors is already very much. So I have to say, yes, there has been some change, especially after Me Too. So I think that has helped a lot. Before that, they sometimes did have no woman in the competition or one or two. But I think four is really... <laughs> Wow, that's a <laughs> huge step forward. So I think what was is slowly starting to change and which should change much more and faster is the attention those fil films get. I think a lot of films are being made by, by female directors, but a lot of them sort of fall into a hole. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. Um, and now I think this would be the moment to focus on those films and put a spotlight on them. And you also have a leading woman in this, where Alice's character could have been a man too, but you made that choice. Yes. Um, how is it for you to, again, find a role like this? Where, do you see a change uh, in roles that you're being offered and that are appearing? Uh, we had this question before, didn't we? I, I think, it's, it's personally, it's hard for me to say because my career changed quite a lot mm -hmm. in the exactly the same year that the Me Too movement happened. So I can, I, I don't know, but from my personal experience, I am reading some interesting and complex and female roles. But, I, but, but there, yeah, there are lots of women pioneering some really brilliant stuff right now, like Phoebe, who, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who we were just discussing earlier, is a friend of mine. I've known her for many years. And um, uh, so, yeah, it does feel like women are getting opportunities and, and, and I don't know. Yeah. yeah, and of course, Fleabag just won like a ton of Emmys, uh, and I know Daphne had a, a similar. A lot of people were bringing up Fleabag when yeah. the movie was out. I think she's because you're quite a acerbic protagonist, and she wasn't your regular, uh, regular female role. I mean, she was uh, many of her qualities were considered would be considered to be flawed, or she's as as I said, acerbic and messy and complex and but funny and smart, so I, I think, yeah, there were comparisons. She was also quite promiscuous as well, but um, yeah. And then Jessica, what's next for you? Do you want to continue making films? Would you ever dip into like maybe the limited series uh, sort of environment? Um, I could also imagine that. I do have a new film on my mind, so the next project will be, again, a feature film. But after that, um, yeah, I'm also open to um, series. I think there is so interesting stuff being done in that sector at the moment. So why not? Of course, that's interesting. Yeah. And how about you? I know that you're you're you were on Into the Badland. Bad I was. Which yes. Ended. Yes. yes it's ended. Uh, did you enjoy being on a on a series, or do you find yourself leaning more towards films? And well, I. 
interesting time. I think as long as something is well written, it depends on the people making it, and uh, every experience is different. Can't really, haven't been able to compare them. But um, oh, I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed doing film. I just finished a really interesting Netflix film called Outside the Wire with Anthony Mackie and Damson Idris, who are both super talented, and lovely, um, and then. Still filming Cruella, which is going to be remade. Which is yeah, so, cool. so, so I haven't finished that yet. But um, yeah, just who knows what what's what's going to pop up. But yeah, I, I I yeah I'm enjoying that collaborative process. It's nice. I know you can't say who you are in Cruella, right? <laughs> I am Catherine. Oh, cool. But that, that's yeah, I'm Catherine. Like that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy. And stones in that. Is it is it weird working with uh, or cool working with a big production house like Disney and yeah it's amazing to see all the um design is it's 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 incredible it's very Vivian Westwood inspired it's very punk yeah (laughs) yeah yeah, it's very cool and Craig Gillespie who's directing it he he makes it very natural so the um the scenes are very very natural so I think it's got quite an edge to it I mean even with this, the like we said, the aesthetic with Little Joe is so cool. Uh, before I go to audience question, how did you come up with the color? There's a lot of mints and greens and pinks, and um, how did you come up with the design of how you wanted it to look? Because it's really it's beautiful and eerie, like I mentioned. Um, I very much like to work with uh, colors, and I think in all my films I try to create an artificial scenery. Maybe with Little Joe more than with my previous films, it's nearly a surrealist world that is created. And of course, the idea behind that is also to tell you a more universal story, because it's very much about a basic human condition. And um, the story about the plant and the genetic engineering is sort of triggering something very basic, I think, about relationships. Um, and the colors bring that fairy tale sort of tone to the story. And it's very much the costume designer who um, creates a lot of the colors. Tanya Hausner, she's my sister. We worked on all the films together. Yes. Yeah, we have the same yeah, imagination of colors. And, and yeah, red and mint and bright colors um, you'll find in my other films as well. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, well, let's go to some audience questions. If we have time. Here we go. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, what was the most memorable day on set of Little Joe? Vulnerable. Most, most memorable. 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 <laughs> <laughs> That's a really odd question. For me, it was the last day because we had to shoot. Uh, I don't know, the program for three days in one day because all the leftovers <laughs> were had to be shot on that last day. And I had a sore back. I was sitting like this, <laughs> couldn't look left nor right. Yeah. <laughs> and we had to shoot a thousand scenes. That's my memorable day. <laughs> oh Quite liked Ben and I, as you can see in the trailer, so it's a spoiler, we're having a bit of physical physical tussle in, in the green room with the pink neon lighting and <laughs> just the, <laughs> the whole experience of that I enjoyed yeah very memorable yeah was it a quick shoot how long was the shoot um s- seven weeks oh wow that was pretty, that's quick and I think we have time for one more hi um I have a question from our website this little joe is being released in so many countries are there any in particular you're excited to see it Oh, I am excited, for example, that it's going to be released in the U.S. Because I am never really sure if Europeans and the people in America, if we are similar or not at all. (laughs) Sometimes I feel, yes, we understand each other. And then suddenly I have the feeling, oh, they are so different. (laughs) So I am excited. And also since it's a genre film in a way, how does that genre film work in the U.S., where, where they actually come from, those horror genre, plant horror films? <laughs> Anybody, uh, any country you're excited to see the movie? Well, we went to, we just came back from Shanghai, which was an experience. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah never, amazing. Uh, and we've just come from Paris. But yeah, I, I love being in New York. It's my heart. It's in New York. 
Um, I love love New York. It's exciting that movies like this uh, can go to a wide audience. I mean, we're even seeing Parasite, for example, which was also at Cannes with you guys. It's exploding. Mm -hmm. um, so please go see Little Joe. It's so cool uh, and different. And thank you both for being here. Thank, thank you. you.